What's up guys, my name is Brandon and Apple just released iOS 13.6 beta 3 to registered developers three weeks after the release of beta 2 and of course one week after the big release of iOS 14 beta 1. And along with the iOS update, we also got beta 3 updates for watchOS 6.2.8, macOS Catalina 10.15.6, and tvOS 13.4.8. And just as a reminder, since it has been three weeks since we covered iOS 13.6 here, this update was originally 13.5.5, so it came out in beta 1 as 13.5.5, and then it got renamed to iOS 13.6 in beta 2, and now we're back again here with beta 3, and of course we keep that 13.6 naming scheme. And we'll briefly talk about why it was changed from 13.5.5 to 13.6, here in a moment. But anyways, you can see the update came in at 4.2 gigabytes on my 10s Max, and that's just because I came from a non-beta version. But if you were on beta 2, it's gonna be about 200 to 250 megabytes. So a very small update as expected for a third beta. And of course, all it says is that it contains bug fixes and improvements. So anyways, if we go into the settings and take a look at the build number here for this update, so let's go to our general about 13.6. You can see the build number is 17G5059C. So we still have a C at the end of the build number here on the third beta, which indicates that we will likely see a fourth beta of 13.6. And then if we scroll down to more, you'll see that we have a modem firmware version of 2.07.00, which might be an update for you depending on which version you came from. So now what's new in iOS 13.6? So if we go into our settings and go to general software update, you'll see that we have some new verbiage and some new settings here where it says customize automatic updates, whereas before it said just automatic updates. And when you click on that, you either have the option to enable or disable automatic updates. But now in 13.6, you get separate options for downloading and installing. So now you can download the update without installing it. So that's pretty cool that Apple added that as a feature now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and turn on True Tone so these two displays don't look so weird together. But yeah, we have the new customized automatic updates here in 13.6. Also in the health application, when we go to the browse tab down here at the bottom, we have a new section here for symptoms. And this is going to show you all of the symptoms that you can report here in the health application for your doctor or your medical professional to see. So you can you know, log all these different symptoms and add them to your health reports. And this symptom section and also the update here for the customized automatic updates and settings, both of those features were introduced with 13.6 beta 2, but I did want to cover them here in this video just because it has been a few weeks and I want to give you guys a refresher in case you missed or just forgot what was new in 13.6. Now also, in addition to those, we continue to see more COVID-19 contact tracing applications showing up in more countries and in more states here in the US. So of course, if we go into our settings and then go down to privacy and then to health, you will see we have the COVID-19 exposure logging right here. And as you can see in Florida here in the United States, it still says not available in your region. And actually this screen is a little bit different as well because here's what it's like in 13.5.1 on the left. It just shows all the information, but it's all grayed out. Whereas in 13.6, it just simply says not available in your region. So you couldn't do anything before, but you could at least see that information. But now it looks like it just says not available in your region because there's not an application currently available in the app store to download for exposure logging. We're also preparing for Apple News Plus Audio. So in 13.6, when it gets released to the public, we will see a new audio tab down here at the bottom if you are subscribed to Apple News Plus. And that's going to basically just curate articles in an audio version. So instead of reading those articles, they will be you know audio versions, kind of like podcasts. And if you guys are interested in seeing exactly how that works and how it looks, 9to5Mac did do a hands-on with that feature ahead of its release. So if you want to see that, I will link their video down in the description below next to the timestamp. Also, when 13.6 gets released, we will see the introduction of car keys. So Apple talked about this at the Worldwide Developers Conference as well for iOS 14, but this is actually going to be a feature in iOS 13 as well. And we can expect to see this introduced with the official final release of iOS 13.6. Now, this is only going to work with the brand new BMWs, but of course it will be more widespread and more expanded to other models and makes as well later on down the road once NFC gets built into those cars and once they're deemed compatible with Apple's car key feature. And if you don't know, this feature is going to allow you to unlock your car just with your phone, like being in your pocket or you may have to pull it out. I'm not sure exactly how it works yet, but basically your phone is going to be your key just like it is with Tesla. You'll also be able to you know, start the car. I don't know if you can open the trunk and everything like that like you can in a Tesla, but we will see once it gets officially introduced 
with 13.6 and the brand new BMWs. Now, as far as performance goes, beta one and beta two have been perfectly fine for me. I've not really had any issues in terms of performance. I really have not had any crashes at all on this 13.6 beta. Now, of course I was using it on my iPhone 11 Pro, but I did switch that over to the iOS 14 beta. So I am just freshly testing out the 13.6 betas on the 10s max here but so far so good i've not really had any issues everything seems to be performing fine and you know i went into camera i went into all the applications and things like that and i really have no complaints however i do want to run a quick geekbench test just to see what kind of scores we're getting here so let's go ahead and run a cpu benchmark and i will be back with the scores all right so you can see there we got an 1117 single core and a 2719 multi-core here on 13.6 beta 3 so pretty decent scores really nothing too crazy and of course i don't have anything to compare this to since i just started using this on my 10s max all i can compare it to is on april 7th when i had 13.4.1 and you can see the difference in scores is pretty massive actually. So we had 674 and 1262, and you can see massively better here on 13.6. So if anything, you can expect a nice performance boost going from 13.4.1, if you're still on that version or lower, to 13.6. Now in terms of the battery life, battery life has been a pretty big issue on 13.5.1, the latest public release. I know some people with the iPhone 7 Plus and the iPhone 10 specifically have said that they've had battery drain issues on the latest public release. So hopefully that's fixed here in 13.6. If you were having battery drain issues, let me know down in the comment below and also let me know if 13.6 fixes those battery drain issues. But for me personally, my battery life has been fine for the first two betas. And then of course it's too early to tell on this third beta, but I would expect it to be exactly the same since the battery life has probably not been tweaked at all here in this third beta. But yeah, that's pretty much it for iOS 13.6 beta three. Now, when can we expect the next beta release? And then we'll also talk about iOS 14 here in a second as well. So today is the 30th, June 30th. We could probably expect a new iOS 13.6 beta because like I said, we have a C at the end of the bill number, which means we should probably get at least one more beta. I would probably expect one more beta. I would think beta four would be the last one. So we can either see that on the 7th or the 14th. So one of those two weeks, I don't see them going another three weeks in beta stages. So, and I mean, it's possible, we could see it on the 21st, but I would expect the 7th or the 14th. Now, as far as the iOS 14 betas go, we can expect to see iOS 14 developer beta two on July 6th or July 13th. Now I know I said that the public beta could also be released on one of those two days, but the public beta could also very easily be released on July 20th. So if developer beta two comes out on the 13th, I would expect the public beta on the 20th or maybe the 21st at the very latest. So that's what I'm expecting for iOS 14 in terms of the beta releases. But of course, Apple always throws curveballs our way, so we really never know what to expect anymore. But based on history, it'll definitely be one of these first three weeks of July for the developer beta two, and then also the public beta, which will be the same build most likely as developer beta two. So yeah, that's the scoop on iOS 13.6 beta three, and also the upcoming releases for iOS 13.6 beta four. And as far as the final release, I should also mention that we'll probably see the final release of 13.6 as well by the end of July. So I would expect to see the final release of 13.6 out to everybody at some point in July. It could very well be the last week of July, but we'll just have to wait and see. Stay tuned to my Twitter and also stay tuned to the discord server where i talk about release dates and things like that as well so yeah that's pretty much it for this video if you guys enjoyed it i would appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe if you've not done so already if you guys want to get your hands on this wallpaper i will have that linked down in the description below i will also have a link to the discord server which i just recently made you guys should definitely go ahead and check out and pretty much anything else you want to know will be down in the description below but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon